Not good. Man, he just he does not like them at all. What's going on everybody? Hope everyone's doing well. I'm Tom Davis, America's Canon Educator. Welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. Today we have a very special video for you. A dog coming from Boston, Massachusetts for one session to work on dog anxiety. This particular dog, guys, has really, really bad severe anxiety. The dog owner can't leave the house. The dog owner can't leave it in the car. Uh, the dog, I literally like had to pry this dog away from the owner. It's really, really bad. So if your dog is suffering from anxiety and you want to know how to overcome it and you want to know why it's created, this video is for you. So does he have a heel command or anything that he responds to or not? Um, sometimes he'll sit, but okay. that's questionable. So the first place we need to start when we're dealing with really anything with the dog is control. Because if, if we don't have the control that we need, it's gonna be pretty impossible for us to really break through on any other level. Yeah. All right, so what I wanna do is, um, I'm gonna have you put this leash on for me and then I'll have you just sit down for me. If I tell you to call him at any time, I'll have you do that. So you see all of this? Yeah. This started when? After the, the bad encounter at the boarding train place potentially? Yeah. Okay, okay. So maybe, you know, it doesn't necessarily always mean that the, the dog got mistreated. It could be that, but it also could just be he doesn't like being away from you. Therefore, him associating that individual with being away from you could also be something like that. Yeah. So you see how much pulling we're getting on the leash and how, because he's, he's in a very fight or flight stage right now. Yeah. So if I were to like approach him, he would get pretty upset with me. But he's also ripping apart his neck. So he's choking himself out. He's getting very insecure. So I'm just going to hang out with him for a second and see if I can gain a little bit of control. We are gonna switch from this metal slip collar to something different because this is gonna continue to fall out of place and not be a safe collar for him. But I hate seeing dogs and I hate hearing dogs choke themselves out. It's okay, buddy. So he's very stressed out for sure. So my goal would be to ultimately get him because if he's stressed out all the time and he's constantly doing this on the leash with other people and being very fearful of people, he obviously doesn't have a lot of confidence, so he lacks confidence big time, yeah. right? He has an unhealthy relationship with you for whatever reason we'll figure out later, but he also is unsafe and uncontrolled on the leash, which makes it hard for you to bring him anywhere, yeah. but it also makes it hard for you to leave him anywhere, exactly. right? That's so true. he's basically imprisoned himself with you, which isn't good. So we're gonna to try to change that. The first thing I gotta do is work on his mental state of mind first, as I mentioned before. So how about, I wanna to switch to a, a, a nylon slip collar first to see how that works. We gotta get this collar to fit better. I want you to take this, okay? And this is gonna go around his neck. It's gonna, and it's gonna go in like this, okay? So that's gonna give us way more control. So my goal is right now is when I take the leash, when he bounces off at the end, so see how every time he was bouncing and bouncing and bouncing, that, that tells us that he's, the correction that he's getting or the punishment or the leash pressure he's getting at the end of the leash with the, with the chain is not working. So he doesn't care. Yeah. So my goal is, is to, to administrate some sort of correction or punishment when he bounces off the end of the leash for him to go, okay, I don't wanna do that anymore. A little bit better. So with a dog that's this stressed out, I don't want to, I'm only enabling him at this point. I'm like letting him be like this. I need to snap him out of it. So now I'm gonna to switch to a, a prong collar. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna let him go again. 
Same thing, okay? This is a Herm Springer 2.25 prong collar. I actually just got these in from a, a lady named Katie, and she makes these really easy to use clips. So it'll make it easier for you to put this on, actually. You can put one over here and here. So now, what I'm gonna tell you to do is buckle it. <laughs> a little easier for you. So let me take them. So, what the prong should do is give us more control. Okay. Cody, come. Okay. Cody, come. Come. Yes, good boy. Good job, buddy. Good boy. I got a little tail wag there. That was good. And of course, guys, what's a video without a giveaway? We're gonna give away three. No bad dogs face masks. All you guys have to do to automatically be entered to win is leave your dog's name in the comments below, letter by letter by letter. And I will pick three people in 48 hours to announce the winners. So when he bounces off at the end of the leash there, he's not getting that real hard choke. So I'm gonna do this back and forth. Cody, come. Yes, good boy, good job. Cody, come. Yes, good boy. That was beautiful. So there on the third time, I didn't have to pop him. Yeah. That was nice. So he's starting to learn. It's good. Good job, buddy. Good boy. So we got some tail wag in there. Okay, so you're the holy grail for him. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, see this space here? I'm gonna start desensitizing this space as not, I'm, I'm gonna try to diminish and dissolve and to dilute this, this, this stride right here. Because as soon as I get close to you, so see, let's break this down a little bit further. I come this way, he's fine, okay? But the minute I start getting close to you again, it's gonna get worse. So I have to break down this <laughs> Candyland Palace strip to you. And I'm gonna do that through leash pressure using the Herm Springer 2.25 and teaching him clearly what I want him to do, which should eliminate a lot of the stress that he has. Cody, come. Yes, buddy, that was all on him. So the less pressure I give him, the more he's understanding what I'm trying to do. So as I keep entering these little radiuses closer to you, he's gonna get harder and harder to you. But eventually I'm gonna get close to you to where I'll be able to pull him away, just like you just saw here without any pressure. That was so good, bud. Good, so lots of positive reinforcement from me. Is he always paying attention to me? Cody, come. Yes, good boy. Well done. Cody. So see how I'm getting closer? He's getting like very fight or flight. He'll get more anxious as he gets closer to you. So I'm, I'm decreasing the stimulation and magnetic pull from you by going in and out. Cody, come. Yes, a little body pressure, good boy. Good man. Cody, come. Good boy. Good boy. So see that quick pop? Yep. Now. That was probably the fastest correction I've given him. And just watch what he's doing now. He's looking right at me, right? So now he's like, <laughs> right? So when you take anything that's anxious, if it's a person or if it's a dog, and you start to go, hey, you, you know, and they're sitting there like, blah, 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 just how he was, right? Do this, but I don't do it. And you're like, oh, okay, fine. And then all of a sudden, the anxiety starts to go down because you have a job, you have a task, you have something to do. So now what I've done is I've taken this space here and I've made it neutral where you're not magnetically pulling him any longer. And I do this. Cody, come. Yes, a good boy, very good boy. Good, right? So I draw him out. The big picture here is the amount of times I've asked him to come to me for an example, would be 20. The amount of times I've given him a physical correction for non-compliance, three to five, yeah. right? Very fair. Where before, it was, Daddy, save me! <laughs> so I'm gonna get closer to you. But look at his engagement with me. Good, so you just ignore him for me. Now we're as close as we can to be to you. 
So you just stay neutral for me. What a good boy you are. What a good boy you are. Oh my goodness. Good. What'd you say, 20 minutes? We've changed some things pretty drastically. It's good. So we're gonna talk about behavior in a minute. Different in his body language, right? So his, his, his tail, his body language has changed. His tail, Cody's a good boy. He's a little bit more happy there. He's curled to me and has given me the opportunity to comfortably, and when I say comfortably, tail's whipping and he's not running away from me, be able to pet him, which is nice. Mm. And yeah. he used to love my cousin before the training. Yeah, good. So let's talk a little bit more about behavior. Why are these things happening? Multiple different reasons. I mean, I've known him for less than an hour. It's hard to say exactly what's going on. I mean, for the most part, that's hard to say with any dog behaviorally. Wait, have you guys subscribed to my channel yet? If you haven't yet, smash that subscribe button and like this video, right? Meow. No, seriously. Dog anxiety, again, historically speaking, can be variations of many different things. It could be, again, breeding, so neurological issues of just having bad pedigrees and the dog just kind of being crazy. Um, could be something you've done. Could be traumatic experiences from day one. Um, could be something that happened when he was a puppy which has made him feel a certain way. I love dogs so much. Like, it's why I started to do what I do. It's the only reason why I started working with dogs is because I love them. I started the majority of my, I didn't ever, I made enough money to pay my bills and a cup of coffee and a peanut butter sandwich for about five years. And I continued to work with dogs because I love them. So my point is, is with this type of case, it hurts me to see a dog so nervous around people that they don't know due to probable cause of something prior happened. So somebody created that essentially exactly. likely anyway who really knows for sure when we when we go through the process of how do we get a dog under control and make them less anxious well dogs are animals right so every single animal for the most part in the animal kingdom is born and almost 15 to 30 seconds after every single animal in the end of king, animal kingdom is born they're being taken care of told what they can and can't do, nourished, fed, um, loved, whatever. They have somebody above them, always. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a whale, giraffe, a coyote, wolf, or a dog. So their whole life, or what they know about life, until they're about eight weeks, they then go to a human family. That human family, the majority of times where I see a lot of problems with dogs and how to negate most behavioral problems, is we don't treat them that way. So mom did all the hard work. And then we give them to people and then all of that goes out the window because we love them, they're cute, fluffy, and small. So then they go, huh, this is weird. I'm at this new place and they don't have fur. So for some reason they're squealing when I try to play with them, which is biting. You know, people are always like, my dog's biting, you know? Um, and they're not being told what they can and can't do and they have no structure, more importantly, bigger picture, right? There's no structure involved. That's the first step of a dog starting to go a little off the deep end where they start going, well, okay, then I guess I'll try this and I'll try that. And we do such weird things with them in order for, you know, our, ourselves to be happy or whatever. The moral of the story is, is dogs need leadership in order to be mentally stable. They need somebody to tell them what they can and can't do. This dog, you know, you, you came from Massachusetts, you have around an hour with me. You're having, and I don't like to see a dog like this either. So I'm gonna do everything I can to say, okay, buddy, hey, it's okay. So slip collar didn't work. Now, I'm just running through options, okay? I wanna, I wanna let you know full transparency of other things we could have done. I could have had you exited the building. I could have exited the building, taken him away, but he still would have been trying to find you, eyes on you, right? And then we, and like I said, we have an hour. So if you were to come in and say, Tom, I have an hour with this dog. If this, if we can't make some progress, I have to euthanize him or I have to get rid of him or whatever. I know that that's not the case, yeah. but the point is, is if you came in and said, let's, let's break ground quick. I'm a, I'm a, I don't like beating around the bush. You gotta be, a, and dogs don't either. They don't wanna, they don't wanna have that, 
oh, like, you know, that's crap. Should I have gotten food out and dangled him around the room with hot dogs? First of all, he, he's too stressed and too anxious to care about food. Second of all, even if he was like, oh, hey, he's, he's interested in the food, and then when the food went away, there's still the problem. The point is, is if you let this dog make decisions, he's gonna continue to be anxious and stressed. It's gonna be your turn, okay? So, good. slow down a little bit, tighten up on your leash. Choke up on your leash a little bit, there you go. Keep him tight, there you go, good. Good, nice and relaxed, but good. That's good, that's good. Turn. Good, yeah, slow down, slow down. So the faster you go, it's hard, the harder it's gonna be. He's got four legs, you have two, you know? Don't wrap that up. Yeah. Heel. Yep, go ahead, keep moving. Tell him good heel. Good, good. Turn again. Heel. Yeah. Good heel, good. Reward him, make sure you good. pay him. Good. good. Catch him, catch him, there you go. Now catch back up, there you go. Heel. Yeah. Good, now walk forward, slow down. Tell him good heel. Good heel. Good, nice job. And when you turn again, yep. heel. Heel. Sl yep. Good boy. Foot, stop. Perfect. Good. So just stop right there. And then you walk forward a little bit. You keep them right there. There. That's how you want to be. Who's in charge? And, and you got to teach him because that's why he's so anxious. Because yeah, I'm walking and he's lunging forward. And exactly. He'll just pull and pull and pull. And exactly. And so w when you walk into a situation and he goes first, Who's in charge, right? You're, you're, the guy that's behind everybody's not in charge, no. right? So another thing, your goal is when you turn and tell him to heal, I think you're anticipating you having to, to do the correction and you don't have to. And that's, that means you've done everything you've needed to do. So make sure when you turn and you say heal and he follows your leg like he has been, yeah. Good heel. Let him know, like, that's it, buddy. That's what I want you to do. And then you just straighten yourself right back out. Boom, boom, boom. Heel. He turns and heals with you. Good heel. And you keep moving. Mm -hmm. the, the only, it's kind of like fishing. The only time that you pull back is when he pulls. Okay? So if he pulls out, pop, but keep moving. Yeah. And again, try to just pay, put your shoulders straight. Walk forward. Pay attention to what you're doing. Okay? Because again, don't get in fix-it mode where you're, you have this little space to work in and you're this. Yeah. Kind of, you gotta shake that off and represent a leader uh, with him, okay? So go ahead again. So turn again. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good, now look at me, yeah, good. Stay on me, good, good, good. Better, now turn and go the other way, heel. Heel. Good, now you look forward. Good, just keep going forward. Correct him right there, a little bit. Yep, now keep going. Don't stop when you correct him, that's all. Keep all coming right. back this way. Yep. Now choke up on your leash a little bit. Choke up on your leash a little bit, get a little tighter. So I would catch him. So remember when you're walking yep. back this way, roll up your leash, tighten it up a bit. That way you can catch him from, you don't, you basically don't want his shoulders to go past your yep. legs. Yep. Good. Good boy. There you go. You're gonna, your homework is gonna be doing this heel exercise back and forth in a non-distracted area. So even this is a little distracted. So you're not gonna do it outside. You're not gonna do it on your walk. You're gonna do healing inside, in the hallway, in the garage, in the side yard maybe. And then, so put him back in the sit. 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 Good, Good sit. Good boy. Good. So replace boy with sit, so good sit next time, that's okay. So what we wanna do is we wanna teach him exactly what, we, what, why is he good? So it's good, command, whatever he just did good. So when he's in the heel, good heel, not good boy. When he's in the sit, so it compartmentalizes, what am I doing good at? So when he's trying to figure out good what? Good boy, good boy, what's boy? Cause, and then he sits and you go good, good boy. Idea. Right, good, he capturing that behavior. Good heel, good sit, so he understands it. Give him a break, so say break. Break. So get a little bit more excited. Break. Break. Good. Good. So the reason why I said break is because Maddie's coming in, so I knew he was going to get excited. So what I did is I said, hey, I'm going to break you before you break yourself, so you win, and he doesn't. Yep. <laughs> so now he's on his break so he can do kind of whatever he wants, and he's excited. So when you're sitting there and you see another dog or you see a female or whatever he's going to be excited about, he, we haven't done enough obedience for you to keep him in that sit when that new person comes in. Yeah. So instead of letting him fail, you're gonna go break, and he's gonna go woo, and then you're gonna be like, yeah. It's, it's basically like 
you know, reverse psychology. I'm gonna break you because I know what you're gonna do, yeah. but it's on your terms, okay. right? All right, you guys, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. If you guys thought that this video was insightful or helpful, please do me a favor, like this video, and in the comments below, leave me some love, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like. We do this stuff all the time. We're the coolest dog training community. We've created such love and, and just growth in the comments. Everyone is so nice to each other. It's just a great, great vibe. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't yet, don't forget, follow me on Instagram. We're doing giveaways on that. Subscribe to my podcast as well. Uh, I have a No Bad Dogs podcast you guys can find on every single podcasting platform there is. We're doing giveaways on that. So I'm just giving a bunch of stuff away. I appreciate you guys and I will talk to you next time. Peace.